It's lovely to be here, but if I had 142 million, I wouldn't be here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Think back 20 years, if you can. What were your hopes and ambitions back then? And how successful have you been with those over the last two decades? Now, go back five years. What were the things you longed to achieve five years ago? And again, how have you done with those? Last question. Let's go back one single minute. What were your targets and burning aspirations 60 seconds ago? <laughs> and have you achieved any of those since I started speaking? <laughs> It's a bit daft, because you couldn't have achieved anything in the last 60 seconds, could you? <coughs> oh, could you? Mr. Toastmaster, fellow time travellers, <laughs> let's go back to the summer of 2017. That big burning clock in the sky was blazing down. It was my day off, and I was home alone. The world was my oyster. Carpe diem, seize the day, I said. Then I drew the curtains, made a huge bowl of popcorn, and switched on a movie. <laughs> The movie I watched was called Scent of a Woman. It stars Al Pacino as an ageing blind man called Frank. And there was one scene that really stood out for me. Frank is in a bar and he meets a young woman called Donna and asks her if she dances the tango. Donna says no. She's wanted to try her whole life, but she's nervous and afraid of making mistakes. There are no mistakes in the tango, Frank says. If you get tangled up, just tango on. And he offers to dance with her there and then. But Donna says she can't. She's expecting a friend any minute. Any minute? Asks Frank. But people live a lifetime in a minute. And so Donna agrees. And what follows is one of the most mesmerising minutes in movie history. As a blind old man and a frightened young woman dance an enchanted tango for a room full of perfect strangers. And when the dance is over, we know that Donna's life has just changed forever. So when I finished watching that movie, I was feeling really inspired and ready to do something with the rest of the day. But then I thought, just one more movie, then I'll take action. <laughs> the next movie I watched is my favourite of all time. But it's not one that was made in America. It's a video I took myself of my then six-year-old daughter, Emily, at her school nativity play. Emily was born profoundly deaf. When she was four, she was given cochlear implants, which do allow her some access to hearing. But at the time of making this video, Emily was struggling to make any sense of the sounds around her. Her speech and language were way, way back, and her confidence was so low. If I'm being completely honest, my own confidence in what my daughter could achieve in her life was also low. So when I'd arrived at school for the nativity play that morning, clutching my video camera, I'd been hopeful of recording nothing more than maybe a few seconds of Emily standing quietly on stage. She'd been given that famous old nativity role of the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> For the final act, everybody on stage stood to sing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, and I was thrilled to see Emily trying to join in. But then suddenly, the stage fell silent, and Emily stepped forward to sing in solo. I couldn't believe my ears. This frightened little penguin, who barely ever spoke a word, was captivating a room with her voice. What she did probably only lasted 20 seconds, but it felt like a lifetime to me, and I lived every moment with her. In the space of just 60 seconds, Emily had managed not only to transcend her disability and sing like an angel, she'd also turned on its head everything I blindly believed would be possible for her in life. So when I reached the end of that movie, I thought if I can't be inspired into action, by my very own penguin-shaped superhero. I may as well give up. So I went online, and I saw an ad that I'd seen a thousand times before. Get over your fear of public speaking with Toastmasters. Tonight. 
It didn't matter if you'd have asked me about my biggest ambition 20 years ago, five years ago, or that very minute. My answer would always have been the same. I wanted to get over my fear of being up here speaking like this so badly, but I'd never found the courage. That night was different, Toastmasters it was, and I arrived to find such a magical place. And during the break, I was asked if I wanted to give a table topic. I said I'd like to, but I was nervous and afraid of making mistakes. There are no mistakes in table topics, the topic master promised me. If you run out of anything to say, nah, just say anything. So I did. And by the time I'd finished speaking, I knew that my life had just changed forever. And in the car on the way home that dark night, I kept replaying the movie of everything that happened at that meeting over and over in my head. And there was one scene that really stood out for me. Something the timekeeper said when she gave her report. Dan spoke for exactly one minute. And that's when it hit me. I'd finally grabbed one of my minutes by the scruff of the neck, and I wasn't going to let it go. So, to all of us here, whatever it is we want to change or improve about ourselves, wherever we dream of going, or whichever fear we'd kill to conquer, remember, our lives aren't gone in 60 seconds. Most of us will be given around 42 million minutes on this planet, every one of them crammed full of vast opportunity. One man made history by being the first to run a mile in less than four of his minutes. Another man couldn't walk, or run, or dance, or sing, or speak. But he wouldn't let that stop him from writing a brief history of every minute this universe has ever seen. What will you do with your minutes? I say let's grab as many of them as we can. Car payment autumn, seize the minute, do something spectacular. After all, Frank was right, people really can live a lifetime in a minute. So let's dance like everybody is watching. Speak like we know exactly what to say. And sing like a frightened little penguin. <laughs> After all, there'll be another 60 seconds coming around the corner. Any minute now. Thank you. <laughs>